So today's talk is all on what happens when we die. And it's actually a start of a new series that we are looking at. And I really hope that it will dispel quite a few maybe myths that some of us have as we go through the month that I've got the privilege of kickstarting the whole thing. The series is called The Christian Hope. And that's why we're going to first have a look at what happens when we die. What is the context? Those people who know me well from Bible study always know I like to look at the context of a passage. So our reading is from the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews was written for the purpose of exhorting, or another word is encouraging, the Jewish Christians so that they could be secure in their faith in Jesus. These Jewish Christians were being intensely persecuted because they had to turn their back on a world that they had known and accepted and lived by. They turned their backs on that to accept Jesus Christ as per the gospel told by Paul. So they had abandoned the rules and the regulations of the old covenant of the law of Moses and had accepted the new covenant ushered in by Jesus. The author of the book is actually unknown, but it is estimated to have been written before AD 70. So if we go now down into chapter 9, where our reading's been taken from, here the author is comparing the features of the old covenant with the features of the new covenant in Jesus, our high priest. This is actually a really good book to study and to read. Our reading today is set in the context of the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Under the Old Covenant, the high priest had to enter the Holy of Holies in the innermost part of the tabernacle once a year with blood from the sacrifice to atone for his and the people's sin. This act was one that had to be repeated year after year as the sacrifice was only that of an animal which could not come close to what was actually required to set the people free for life. So in contrast to this, Jesus came to earth, laying aside his majesty and all that was God himself to be the pure, perfect, sinless one, voluntarily giving himself over to us to be hung on the cross, allowing his blood to flow over us all to be the last, full and final complete sacrifice. His blood became the final atonement required by God for the forgiveness of our sins. Yesterday, today, and forever. Oh man, isn't that amazing? So what happens to us when we die? Well, when I pondered this, the butterfly and the caterpillar came to mind. We know that to become that beautiful butterfly, the caterpillar must die to its existence as a caterpillar in order that the butterfly can emerge from the chrysalis as a free, colorful butterfly. There is a predetermined pattern of life that a caterpillar must be part of. In a similar way, as humankind, we are also part of a life cycle ordained by God because of original sin way back in Genesis. Our text today, we zone now even further down in, in chapter 9, is verse 27. Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Jesus was offered once to bear the sins of many. So humankind must die, and then the consequence continues. As there is the life of a butterfly after the caterpillar goes, so there is life after we die. We don't go into nothingness. The difference is that we have a choice as to what that life will be like. So I also love looking into the root meanings of words. And the word appointed in that passage is translated from Greek. The original text used the following words that give some clarification as to actually the meaning behind our English word appointed. Another word in some translations is destined, but they all have the same root. And those words are reserved, like a table being reserved. 
in a restaurant, awaiting him, reserved for one. And another phrase is laid up. So it's, it's important we understand that because it's a whole thing of what is reserved for us in life. It is reserved that we do such and such. So if we look at the question, what happens to us when we die? There are two things we're getting out of this verse, and they're very clear. We don't have to dig. They're very clear. It is appointed. It is laid aside. It is reserved for us to die. So we know that. We can see that. But then what happens after we die? Well, this is the crunch part. Judgment comes after we die. So I suppose in a nutshell, that's answered the question. So judgment comes after we die. Does that give us any hope? Is there any hope in that for us? But if we look in Colossians, you say the Colossians 1 verse 5 says, because of the hope laid up, reserved, appointed for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of the truth, the gospel, there is hope laid up. There's also hope. To Timothy, Paul writes, in the future, there is laid up, there's appointed, there's destined for me, Paul, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. How exciting is that? It's not only to Paul, it's to us as well. So the righteous judge will award him, and that is Jesus. Got a whole lot of questions on this slide, and we'll go through them one by one, because I think here is where the crux is. So how do we respond to this, is the first one. Well, we have hope. Our hope is in Jesus. We need to take life seriously, our lives seriously. Fact is, we are going to die. But because of the new covenant established by Jesus for us, if we acknowledge and receive Jesus and live our lives according to his purposes and plans, we will reap the fixed result of our lives, salvation, and with that, eternal life with Christ, our righteous judge, as Paul calls him. So then who is Jesus to you? Is Jesus in a box that you take out every now and then, blow off the dust, dust it off and open it? Are you living in the hope that he has offered everyone, but only a few receive? We do need to choose before we die. So what difference would this make to our discipleship? Well, thinking about it, I think that there should be a before Jesus versus after Jesus contrast. Our lives should reflect the love we have for Jesus in our actions, the way we eagerly study his word to learn more about him, the grace, love, forgiveness, and kindness we show towards each other. There will be some things that we will need to do away with, maybe some ungodly lifestyle choices. When Jesus came, he did not add to the old covenant of Moses. He replaced it with himself, the new covenant. So in Jesus, we are renewed. We are a new creation, appointed to life and life in its fullness. Can you say amen to that? So the question is, what happens when we die? Well, I think a lot of the choice is ours. Based on our choices here and today, before we die, I believe that there's two consequences when we die. And I think that the result is very much between you and the Lord. But we know we will die. Every one of us know that. And we know judgment comes. But is it the judgment in Jesus or is it just judgment without Jesus? And there's a huge difference there. So where are you now? Each one of us, it'd be good if we can just stop and take time right now. Consider your standing with Christ. If this passage has struck a chord in your heart and you'd like to discuss it further, please call someone who you really know follows the Lord closely or Kevin and myself. We would love to talk more about it with you and to help you explore all of this. Thank you, Jesus, for your great love for all humankind. 
thank you for the new covenant you set up that will endure forever. Thank you that when we die in you, we are already judged to be with you for eternity. As the author of the letter to the Hebrews desired, may we all be sure of our standing in you. May each of us make that decision for ourselves. Amen. Thank you.